Have you heard this song? Joe Wayne. Yeah, get up. What's on your bar? First class, Joe Wayne. We'll turn that up, bro. Yeah, you've probably heard this song. So this is Gen Z Fuji remix by First Class featuring Terry Akbala. This is a very dope record and I mixed and mastered it in stereo and Dolby Atmos. And we are going to do the breakdown for the stereo mix and master. And I'm going to walk you through my process as usual. And hopefully you can pick up one or two things you can use in your own records. Okay. So my mix process has not changed much from the last time I did a mix breakdown. I'm still working with the ideology of fixing problems first before we get into EQing and shaping and everything that we're going to do for the record. And I also like to arrange my sessions like this. I have the instrumentals up, vocals below. I just like order like that. And I usually have folders within folders, right? So I have the instrumental folder, but then I also have folders for the drums, bass, and folders for melodies. Because that's how I process my sub mixes anyways. I usually have all of the drums going to a drum bus, the bass going to bass bus, melodies going to melody bus, and that's where I will do my blue compression. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the kick. First plugin that I'm using here is the trim plugin. If you've watched any of my mix breakdown, you remember I'm always talking about gain staging, which means if the signal is too hot, I'm going to turn it down so I can have decent headroom going into the rest of my processing. But if it's too quiet, then I'm going to increase it to have enough level going into the rest of my processing. So I have a trim plug in here to turn down the level of this kick. The pre-fader level, by the way, that's the level of the signal before any processing. My Pro Tools meters are set to pre-faders. So when I play any sound, what I'm getting is the pre-fader meter. That's the actual level of the sound before any processing. And that's what we're seeing here. And I'm just doing a high pass filter up to 30 heads, basically, to the talking drums. The same process, but this time around, as you can see, I've used the trim plugin to add gain to the signal. So it's loud enough going into the rest of my processing. And then I have an EQ here as well. Right. So what I'm doing here again is doing a high pass filter up to 72 Hertz, just taking out the frequencies that are not important. One way to make sure you're doing this right is to solo the frequency range when you're doing a high pass filter. So let's listen to that. So you can hear that I'm not actually affecting the sound itself with the high pass filter that I've done here. If I moved it forward, for example, now you can see that we are cutting into the sound. You don't want to do that. You just want to take off all of the frequencies that you don't hear, but are kind of occupying space within the frequency range. And then I'm also doing a, a bit of a cut here to remove some resonant frequencies. Yeah, hear that. Because you want to make sure you don't have any resonant frequencies before you hit your compressor. And then let's go over to the next sound. What do we have here? Yeah. I'm sure I'm doing the same thing here. The trim plugin to add some gain and EQ to just, you know, roll off all of the unwanted frequencies. This is a shaker. The same thing, because a lot of the sounds in this beat came to me very, very quiet. And as usual, you know, rolling off all of the unwanted frequencies. Yeah, I did the same thing for the rest of the sounds within the drums. Like I said, the gain staging process is simple. If it's too loud, you reduce to avoid distortion, and if it's too quiet, you increase. So you have good enough level going into the rest of your process. Let's go over to the bass. I'm not doing any gain staging here for this bass. The level is just right to me. So using an EQ to do a high pass up to 30 hertz as well. And then... This is something that I do a lot. I'm actually sidechaining the kick to the bass. I'm going to leave links up here to a video on how to sidechain your kick to your bass in Pro Tools. I also made videos on how to do it with FL and Logic, by the way, so you can check those out as well. This is just to make sure the kick and the bass can exist together in harmony. You can hear how smooth that sounds. And I'm doing the same for the rest of the bass. I'm doing something a little bit excessive here. I've sidechained the kick to the bass, but I've also sidechained the log drums to the kick. Let me show you what I'm doing. 
I hope this screen can carry everything. <laughs> so let me open the two compressors. The first compressor is what I'm using to sidechain the kick to the bass. So every time the kick plays, the bass docks a little bit, right? You can see. Right. And then I'm using the second compressor to sidechain the log drums to the bass as well. So every time the log drum plays, the bass would dock a little bit. Right, and I've also set the parameters just to be a little bit different. So for the kick, I've set the attack to one millisecond. And then for the log drum, I've set the attack to two milliseconds. So which means the kick we hit first before the log drum. So even if they hit at the same time, the kick we hit first before the log drum. <laughs> so it's just a very, very um, complicated way of using side chaining, but it's very, very effective as you can hear, right? So it feels like everybody has their own space, basically. Right, so as usual, the first thing I'm doing here as well, gain staging. So I have a trim plugin to increase the level, right? Because it was too quiet. And then I have this EQ here to remove a lot of resonant frequencies. There's a lot of resonant frequencies that I didn't like. Let's bypass this and listen to before and after. So this is before. And then after. I don't know if you can hear it, but it sounds just a little bit smoother. There's some little, little whistling sounds that would have become problematic when I start compressing. Let me exaggerate some of them so you can hear what I'm talking about. Right? So something like that, you know? And then... I'm sure I'm doing the same thing here. You know, you know the trim plugin again to add some gain. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing here. Taking out some resonant frequencies that I didn't like. And also the high pass filter as well, up to 113 hertz, you know, just removing all the frequencies that are not needed, basically. I feel like that's something I do a lot more in my mixing. I spend more time taking out stuff that are not needed. That way you're able to actually get a very, very clean mix without doing a lot. What do we have here? I love these samples. This song is very, very dope. So again, the same process. Like I said, a lot of the sounds that came with this data were very, very quiet. Just doing a high pass filter here as well. And then what's this? Okay, just more samples and stuff. This was actually a very easy and quick song to mix. It's not a lot of elements, right? But this is also my kind of music to make, by the way. I believe less is more. <laughs> now you might have noticed that I've not done any compression yet. That's because I do most of the compression in the sub mixes or boss. Do you understand? I will only compress individual tracks if I absolutely have to. Basically, I get the beat to sound as good as possible without any compression. Another thing you need to bear in mind when you're balancing the instrumental is to make sure you retain the artistic intent of the artist or producer, especially when the song you're working with has a rough mix or a demo. Now, what I mean by that is you have to constantly reference the demo to make sure you've not made the kick too loud or you don't make the snare too low in comparison to what the artist or producer have done in the demo. Because usually if they make the snare very loud, it's because they want the snare to be loud, right? Very important. Now let's look at the sub mixes slash extracts and see what I'm doing with the compression. I mostly prefer to work with analog emulation compressor plugins because they have a warm tone that I enjoy. And for this record, I'm actually using the LA2 compressor by UAD to compress drums, the bass, as well as the melodies. And after I've done the compression, I would also sum all of this aux track to another aux track where I could further process the whole beat or adjust the level as a whole. So it's my way of summing everything into a two track for the beat. And I also do the same for vocals as well. So at the end of the day, I have two aux tracks that has the overall beat and the overall vocals before I hit my master box. All right, so let's got the drum, bass, and melody, bass, compressor settings. For the drums, usually what I'm aiming for is a gain reduction of about one dB, 
right? I'm not trying to squash the drums at all, but I'm also using this compressor to increase the overall level of the drums, right? To make it just pop. As you can see, right? I'm barely just hitting like one dB of gain reduction, right? And then, um, and I'm sure I'm doing the same thing with the bass as well. Let me go over to the logs. Yeah, I mean, you can see the needle barely moving, right? Like I'm not doing so much compression, but I'm using this compressor to like add gain. Before, you can barely hear the bass, right? So this is like my main secret sauce for making everything sound beefy and loud in my mix, to be honest, this LA2 compressor. So the same thing with the melodies as well. There's barely any compression happening, right? But if you look down here at the level of the drum, the bass, and the melody, you see that we're not clipping at all. Like. Everything is loud, everything is punchy, but we have enough headroom, which is very, very important for when we get to the mastering stage. Right. And then I'll talk about the parallel compression. I'm just using this to add extra punch to the drums, right? Parallel compression usually increases the quiet parts of the drums and adds more punch to the transient. Let's listen without the parallel compression. You can hear the drums. They sound good, but when you put back the parallel compression, it just comes alive a little bit, right? Let me exaggerate this too. Right? When you're doing parallel compression for your drums, you just want the effect to be subtle. You're actually going to feel it more than you hear it. It's a good way to really, really make your drum stand out in your mix. I'm going to leave a link up here as well to show you how parallel compression works and how to set up parallel compression. And you can use the same technique for any door, again, for Logic, for FL. It's actually a very, very sick technique. And you can also use it for vocals or melodies or whatever elements of your record you want to add extra punch to, basically. Right. So that's that for the instrumentals. Let's go over to the vocals real quick. I really like the texture of his voice and how it sounds in this record. So let me walk you through the vocal chain. And also, because there are two artists in this song, I have two vocal chains. One is for Terry Apala and one is for First Class. Let me walk you through First Class vocal chain and just show you what I'm doing with these vocals, basically. The very first plugin in the vocal chain here is the NS1 from Waves, the noise suppressor. Again, I'm just using this to trap a little bit of noise because there's some noise in this recording, but I'm not doing too much noise reduction, to be honest. And I'm also using the Ozone EQ to remove resonant frequency as well. I'm going to leave links to videos that I've done in the past to further explain everything that I'm showing you that I'm doing in this song, just so that this video is not very, very long. Again, back to the philosophy of fixing problems first before shaping the tone on the vocals and then compressing the vocals. So that's what we're doing. We're fixing problems first. Noise suppression to take out noise. Dynamic EQ to remove resonant frequencies. DSN, which is the next plugin. We're using this Nectar DSN to remove sibilance from the vocals. Let me slow the detected sibilance so you can hear the amount of sibilance that I'm taking out from the vocals. Right, so it's just the very, very, very top of the sibilance at this point. And I've set the DSR to capture sibilance from 4 kilohertz and up. And then the next plugin on the vocal chain is the SSLE channel strip. I'm just going to bypass this so you can hear what it sounds like before. And then after, then I talk about the settings that I'm doing here. So this is before. <laughs> And then after. I 
mean, that sounds very, very dope. You can hear how the vocals sit properly in the mix. Because I've used the EQ to shave off some of the frequencies that we don't need and boosted the ones that we needed. By the way, this is the UAD version of the SSLE channel strip plugin. Um, if you had the Waves one, the numbers would be labeled more in detail so you can know where exactly you are. But this is actually a much, much better approach if you ask me. Because now you're not looking at numbers, you're just listening for how it sounds, right? Which is something you should be doing. So let's start from the low frequencies. I'm doing a cut up to, I think, minus 12 db around 200 hertz right and for the low mid frequency i've set the bell curve to be a sharp one so it's like sharp curve and then i'm doing a cut up to i guess minus 14 db around 800 hertz and then for the high mid frequency and for the high mid frequency i've set the curve to be a wider curve and then i'm doing a cut up to i guess minus 2 db around three kilohertz around three kilohertz that's where there's usually harshness in your vocals so that's why i've done the cut there and then on the high frequencies i'm boosting up to i guess we can say 6 db around 16 kilohertz to add that air to the vocals now if you don't know how to use this plugin before one easy way to actually work with this is to just boost any of the frequency range that you want to adjust and then sweep and listen for annoying resonant frequencies basically for example let's say i'm doing this from scratch let's boost the low mid to the highest and then let's listen so you can hear that around here you can hear that nasal sound and it's really really annoying so we're just going to turn that down and then can you hear how clean it sounds now, right? That's helping the vocals sit properly into the mix. And yeah, that's how you do it. And then the next plugin on the vocal chain is the 1176 compressor. Now, this is where I begin to compress the vocals because at this point, I'm done with the fixing problems part of my vocal chain philosophy. And now we're going to begin to compress the vocals. If you watched any of my videos before, you know I like to compress in series and this will be the first compressor in the vocal chain. And the purpose of this compressor is to tame peaks. So let's listen. If you notice the needle is barely moving we're only just using this to tame the peaks of the vocals now let's look at the compressor settings real quick this is a revision ae version of this 1176 compressor and this version has this slow feature i'm going to leave a link here to a video i made on how this compressor works and now when you select the slow feature it brings down the attack time to about 10 milliseconds and which generally you want for vocals so that you can retain your transient i've set the attack time to slow and a very very fast release this compressor also has a fixed threshold so the more input you drive into the compressor the more compression you get and usually 4 ratio 1 is a great ratio for vocals basically that means for every 4 db above the threshold the compressor is going to reduce the level by 1 db and then the next plugin on the vocal chain is the c6 multiband compressor this is where i do the final tone shaping for the vocals so what i doing with this is doing some eq in as well as compression because a multiband compressor is basically an EQ that has a compressor or a compressor that has an EQ, however we want to look at it, right? And um, I've split this into four bands. I'm using the 10K and up to add air to the vocals. Um, 1K to 10K, I'm using that to add clarity to the vocals. Then from 100 hertz to 1.5K is the mid frequency. So this is what I'm using to tame the mid frequency some more so that the vocal can properly sit in the record. Let's listen to it before and after and see what difference this does to the vocal chain. So before right this is very very great for modern vocals i'm going to leave a link here again to a video on how to really use this it's very very easy to use and it's amazing as you can hear okay and then the next plugin on my vocal chain is the last compressor that i use which is the le2a now the purpose of this compressor is to even out the performance of the vocal and bring the vocal to the front right to give it that 
punch okay the early 2a also has a fixed threshold so the more you increase the peak reduction the more compression you get and then you know you just adjust your gain to match or however you want it the early 2a also has a fixed ratio again i'm going to leave a link here so you can learn some more about the early 2a but this is a great compressor for vocals very transparent the attack time is also somewhere around 10 milliseconds so again it's great for vocals then the next plugin on the vocal chain is my last dsr now the purpose of this is to catch any sibilance that would have built up due to all of the processing that we've done. This DS also focuses on words that has the K and the T, not just the S's, right? And I've also set this to capture sibilance from around 3.8 kilohertz and up. So let's listen to it before and after. So this is before. And then after. You can hear how smooth the T's sound, right? <laughs> right, the T's. So that's that for the dynamic section on the vocal chain. And from here, we're going to the time-based effects. That's the reverb and delay sounds, basically. I like to work with two reverbs, right? The first reverb is a short reverb. The second reverb is, you know, a much longer reverb. And then I have my delays. For the room reverb, I'm using um, Pure Plate by UAD. You can use any reverb you want for your room reverb, to be honest. The most important thing is the time has to be really, really short. It's a way to calculate that too, by the way. It's very common math. 60,000 divided by the BPM, you know, you get your reverb time, right? For the longer reverb, I'm using hitch reverb. I've set the reverb time and then the correct pre-delay time according to the tempo. For the delay, I'm using um, baby audio. Baby audio's comeback kit. Very straightforward delay, very dope, very easy to use. Basically, that's all. That's that for first classes vocal chain. Now for Terak Balaz vocal chain, the processing is very, very similar. But obviously they have different vocal textures. So in that case, you know, the EQ might be slightly different, okay? Right? For example, on first class's vocals, I was doing a cut up to almost like minus 14, minus 15, but here it's like I'm doing a little less than that. Same thing with the low frequency, I'm doing a little less cut here. And then for the highs, I'm actually doing a little less boost. So that's just, you just have to treat the vocals differently so you can get custom sound for each and every person. Right, for the background vocals, similar processing, but a few different adjustments for the EQ to, you know, again, differentiate the tone right and to make sure the background vocals and the lead are not exactly occupying the same frequency range do you understand what i'm saying and then i'm also using a different reverb to again differentiate the tone differentiate the space do you understand what i'm saying obviously the background vocals have a lot of reverb right that already puts it behind the lead vocals and I'm using um, Neo Verb, yeah, Neo Verb by Isotope for the background vocals. And then the last thing I'm doing for the background vocals is ascend to an aux that has a doubler in it. This is very, very simple technique. What I'm doing here is just creating a copy of the background vocals and spreading it to the sides, right? Basically, so it just feels like it's surrounding you. You know, just to create a 3D effect with the background vocals. You know, chorus effect. Very, very simple stuff. You know, that's that for the mix. Um, That's literally everything I did for this song. And like I said, I have a lot of beats summed up to a beat boss or aux. And same thing with the vocals. So I can control either one of them. Right. And if I wanted to do some more processing, I could from here, because sometimes I would do EQ matching, but I didn't do that for this record because I didn't think it needed it, right? And my master chain is pretty much the same with the master chain I just released recently. I'm going to leave a link below so you can download my vocal preset and mastering preset. It's pretty much the same thing here. So I have my VU meter at the top, you know, 
monitor the record going into the chain to make sure I'm not clipping. And then I'm using Ozone 11 to do some EQing and stereo imaging for the overall track, basically. Again, my mixing, again, my mastering process is just like my mixing process. I fix problem first and then I go ahead and shape the overall tone of the whole record and then go into compressing and then limiting and making everything big, basically. So that's that. And then we're going to the Poltec EQ to boost the low frequency and then the high frequency, right? So you can hear how he makes the record fat. <laughs> I like this EQ a lot. Sounds very, very good for mastering. And then you have the SSL boss compressor. You know, very transparent compression. I'm only just using this to glue the sound. So I'm not doing too much gain reduction. It's mastering anyways. You don't want to do too much, right? Probably about one dB of gain reduction there. Very slow attack so that the transit can cut through. I don't want to affect the transit at all because I don't want to lose the punch that the record has, okay? A bit of saturation with the Abbey Road Saturator. But I've set this to sides. So I'm only doing saturation for the sides, which is usually the high mid and high frequencies, basically. And then the IM Pusher. I did a video recently on how you can use just this plugin to master your record which is crazy and i'm going to leave a link here but i usually like to use this as part of my master chain to just add some touches to the record i've done a boost on the mid frequency and low frequency and i'm also using the clip mode in this plugin to increase the perceived loudness before i hit my limiter i mean let's listen to it before so this is before you, yeah, after, Do you bala, ni maluri, mi it's an amazing plugin, trust me. And then um, the last plugin here is, yeah, the maximizer. So this is the limiter that I've chosen to use for this record. There's some amazing features here though that I really like. You have this transient emphasis. So this just gives a little bit of enhancement to your transient basically. It also has a soft clip. So if I did not want to use the clip mode in the IM pusher, I could have done that here. And I've set the detail settings to 24 bit depth and detail amount to medium. The mode to IRC1, which is the best mode for mastering, you know, according to my research and based on my own experience because I've used this for a while and I've set Tropic limiting to off as well as you can see I'm not even doing too much limiting with this plugin because I've done some decent amount of clipping with the IM pusher and I've done some compression with the G Master Boss compressor all of this process it just adds little little bit of gain so when you get to the limiter you're not doing too much this is why it's very important to make sure by the time you get into your mastering stage you have enough headroom to work with so you can have a transparent sound and you don't have to push anything mixing and mastering is all about adding tiny 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 bits of adjustment here and there to make one big grand amazing sound basically that's what we've done here that's it this is everything i've done for this record i hope you got some before this and if you have questions please leave them in the comment section below i will try my best to answer to the best of my abilities and if you'd like to download my vocal and mastering preset like i said i'm going to leave a link below so you can download that and i'm going to start putting out preset for pro tools in a bit i'm working on them not really working i just don't have time for it <laughs> but i'm going to start putting out preset as well for pro tools so that's going to be all for now i hope you got something from this this mix breakdown if you did make sure you leave me a like and make sure you subscribe if you've not if you want to book my services for mixing and mastering stereo and dolby at most i'm going to leave a link below to my engineers page so you can go and book my services if you've not listened to the project atmos ep i'm going to leave a link down below if you're a logic pro user and you want to record yourself i have a free logic pro template for download as well i'm going to leave a link down below it also comes with a free stock afrobeat preset basically like all stock plugins so yeah thank you for watching i shall see you on the next one better my call out you sing it for setting this song is a banger jump when it for me never go love it but do banger whip whip jump when it cause class music in love and go buy me one more more in my leg go from Abuja to Lagos to the day for me kakakere all over the world on this video I don't know